Okay, let me know if you can hear me good. All right. So welcome to another episode of uh, Rising Grind. As you know, what is our first main purpose? To educate and to give you our first three hot tickers of the day. Today, I'm over here with uh, Michaela. So she's a trader or a futures trader. And uh, we're looking at stocks as SQNS, FFIE, and also we're looking at CETA. Then we're looking at large caps, NVIDIA and Tesla. So market has been very volatile in pre-market. And especially we have a lot of small caps that are simply having pumps and dumps. Uh, one of the main setups that we see is really pump and dump. What is a pump and dump? So this morning, for example, we had CETA. And CETA came all the way up into a daily resistance at $3. And then you can see on this bar, right? This is the one minute bar. Below we have a big selling pressure, this bar over here. And then after this bar, we started like fading and rejecting VWAP. So we took our trade around 270, more 250s. We covered parts of the Jalen's over here, $2.10. Now we're holding for 170. This is a pump and dump. <laughs> Ramonia Luizio. All right, so let's start with the first stock of the day, SNS. Also, remember, traders, that if uh, you're looking to trade small caps, first of all, a few tips. You need very good to learn price action and the setups. So we use indicators, we use volume, but having a strategy is the most important thing. So strategy is formed by a plan, by a setup of playbooks by a read of price action and volume, and also by forecast. Today we have SQNS. It's not an easy stock to trade. If you hear this noise, it's my alarm over here that tells me the new stock's coming up. SQNS, rise and grind process. So we have a stock that has over here, jumps after quarterly results. And also we have another news on SQNS, which is reach agreement on sales of 4G ITO technology. Okay, so it's up this morning. The stock has a very small market cap around 30 million. That's the reason why this is a small cap. The stock has 60 million float. So it's the amount of stocks of shares that you can buy in the stock market. The stock has low institutional ownership. The stock has 63% institutional ownership. And if I go to check the stats of the past, we can see that only one time this stock faded on day one. So essentially, we don't have views and many stats from the past. We have over here that stock is up on earnings, stock is up on a, an agreement, and we have 60 million float and 63% institutional. Now let's check. SQNS over here, if we have anything on the illusion, okay? The illusion tracker over here. So the company over here, yeah, the confirms we have 55 million of float. They have no cash, you can see here. So if they have no cash, they need to raise money. Otherwise, they're not going to be able to survive. But they don't have any more in ATM because ATM over here 2020 is terminated. So no CPU. And a shelf over here, replaced and registered is not anymore active because as you know, a shelf lasts only three years. So if this would be November, 2020 and November, 2023 is done. And you can see in the past, what it did the stock had many over here as three. So it has an history of dilution. Now let's look at the company. Let's look at the chart, okay? So this is the last part of our process. First of all, I wanna go with the daily chart, okay? So SQNS. This morning, the price went 185. And these are my levels, okay? So I go back and I check my levels. I put a resistance over here, 170. I put another one over here, 185. And then we have this gap fill, very important. You can see this gap, right, from 130 until over here, 250. So those are my levels. And how I'm going to trade today 
SQNS. What is going to be my plan? It was very simple. So we're going to play in two ways. The first one is if we have this morning a dip into this 130, often I've seen earning plays doing this pattern. This pattern is going to have a breakout around 150. So 145, 150 is going to be my buy signal. Okay, over here I'm going to buy. I'm going to risk the relative low, so my stop loss. And I'm going to look for this target 190. If we break $2, 220, and 250. So that is going to be my first play of the day. Okay. If instead we don't have this accumulation, but the price simply opens and it pushes into this zone over here, 170, 155. You can see before price stalled, right? 170 and 155. Over here in this zone, I will short and looking for a target down here, 080. So this is going to be my short area. We generally have a very good timing because we're using strategy, pattern. So the system, like in this case, you can see is telling us short, right? And also we have order flow to help you, to help us enter inside the trade. So anybody else will be today traders on uh, SQNS. I think this is going to be a good one. And we're going to look to trade it like uh, with some size. But don't anticipate, okay? Only if we have those two plays. Well, let's see who else is going to trade this. So some traders are looking to short this near two. Florian is going to trade it. The stop body, if we trade into the pre-market high, yes, it's going to be just above the pre-market high. Okay? Exactly. All right. Next one this morning is FFIE. We were talking before with uh, the traders in the room and about this company, why this is up. So we can read over here. This is the second day that FFIE is up. And over here, announces event date for China, USA, automotive bridge strategy. And they're really uh, writing that news. Uh, a few things to say about the company. Again, a very small market cap. So we know it's a small cap. We know that these are often over here uh, manipulated. 12 million float. It's impossible that a short flow percent is 380%. So this is like probably a bug. But it's, I believe, something above 30 or 40%. So we have a high institutional ownership. And then also we have the stats of the company, how this performed in the past. But we don't have to look at day one. This is day two. Day two, we had three times this faded. You can see on, uh, sorry, two times closed above the open. Five times this closed below the open. So we have a stock with history of fader on day two. Make sense? Uh, by the way, traders, we have to stop one second because like yesterday, we have a stock coming up, GDC. We have a stock coming up over here, GDC. So let's look together if we can take a, a live trade like yesterday. So daily levels over here is around nine. Okay, the first thing I'm looking at the volume. For now, the volume is not that high, 40K. And then the second thing I'm looking at, the daily levels. Yes, it is this DDC came from $2 up to $9, $8. So we have a resistance over here at eight. And then over here, the major resistance is 1050. So we'll love over here to see this at 1050 this morning. Okay, major resistance 1050. Okay, let's go back to FFIE. FFIE. 
So as you know, our rise and grind process, we look at the stats, we look at the news, and now we see this stock pushing up very high volume yesterday, 150 million traded. This is an insane amount of volume. And this morning you can see the price is over here, 1040. So where is the first resistance here? $11. And then the other major resistance, is over here around $16. Let's see what else. Yes. So 11 and $16 are levels we want to look on FFIE. Okay. So I'm going to write over here FIE plan, FFIE short on extension To 11 or 16 or buy dips at the gate first 30 minutes at J lines with a J line curve. Okay, so essentially, if we have a push over here above this level, we're shorting. If we have a dip over here and a cup in volume, we're going to look for a long. And now let's stay with GDC. Okay, GDC over here is coming up. Give me a second. So let's look at GDC. Interesting stock from yesterday. So watching over here, as we said, 10, 10, 40. We're going to trade this with the team. Now we have a good increase of volume, 240K on the one minute. Don't try to short this. You can see that this came up from the VWAP and started volume at nine o'clock. Yes, Chester, the levels always matter even if we have a reverse split. Uh, Roman, yes, we'll be trading CRK, CRKN. We also traded this this morning. I'm waiting for a GDC for two major plays or a dip into the J lines. Why? Because essentially yesterday we had so many good longs. This, 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 every single time over here to the J lines. But if we have an extension to the daily level, then I'm looking for a short play. Okay. So let's look over here, the price action on this one. You can see they're building support at 880. This is looking over here at their flow. But I want to see the price much higher. So a uh, newbie asked me if GDC is a stock that a newbie would trade. It is because a newbie simply has to trade based on the pattern and based on the playbook. If this playbook and you're part of a small cap room, you will see this, this stock to be in your playbook over here, like a gap and extension. You simply just have to, you know, set the risk. So for, let's say, $1, you will trade 1,000 shares. For $5, you will trade, let's say, 500 shares. For $10, you will trade 100 shares, okay? You just need to uh, always have a risk set allocation or a risk allocation set. And also you have a risk per ticker. Maybe you want to risk, let's say, $200 in a day. Okay, risk only 100 bucks on GDC. Another 100 bucks, another stock, another stock. So this is going to be a good play for us, but we need to wait for the gate. Okay, so GDC, FFIE. And then also we have CETA. In CETA, we are short around 260s. Uh, I saw some good trade this morning. Even my wife took a good one over here. And they... They all took the short.
based on our pattern. Yeah, so we'll be yeah, we'll be watching again for, for CETA over here. So CETA, if we get at two dollars, two ten, we'll be gonna look for a short. All right, traders. So uh this has been a good week. Uh as I said last week, next week I'm gonna be still over here in Italy. Then on the other one, it will gonna be in New York and then in uh, Denver, Colorado. So you can join me to trade. In New York, we're full, but I still have some spaces in Denver. So we're going to trade with a 30K account on Denver and show you what you can do. And Cobra will be there with us. So it's going to be a great opportunity to learn all my process. And as you will see, you will learn a system rather than discretionary trading. You will learn how we use statistics and metrics to have setups with 40, 50, 60, 70% win rate, when to trade them how to read a tape. So the complete full, I would say process of trading. Now, any plans for MNTS? Good money, brother. So MNTS over here came all the way down. So I'd like over here to see a little bit of pop. You see that I traced this 130. So if you can have a pop 130, 140 maximum, and I see a trend line break or a stuff, I'm looking to short this. Not before, bro. Not before. Okay. So I'm looking for that play. And um, you can see this morning, MNTS gave us a short over here and then gave us a short over here. Okay. I'm entering when uh, I have over here spikes. So I would like to see over here another short 130, 140. And here the system is telling gap and crap with this volume. Of course, 5 million, 10 million per 5 minute bar comes in. Don't touch it. We're looking for a long play. Okay. Uh, let's say, Gardel, how do you go about your stop during pre market? You set your mental level. Okay. One thing liquidity traps are based on uh, stop loss. I made some uh, videos even like years ago that uh, market makers and the algorithm, so big ants, will go to hunt. Uh, in pre market, there is a way on DAS that you can set, and I share the process in a video. So for all like the traders in uh, JTrader Co, there's a way that with DAS you can set hard stop losses. Okay. Otherwise, in per market, you cannot set hard stop losses, but there's a way that you can set hard stop losses. I personally always suggest newbies to have a hard stop, not really where's the support resistance. So I don't want that, for example, you buy over here and you put simply your stop loss over here. Because what happens, market makers or algorithms, often they will go and trigger your stop loss. That's a liquidity trap. And then push it back up. So I prefer that you put a stop loss a little bit far from there, just like a reminder, just like a protection. And then when the stock is working, you move your stop to break even. So having stop loss set on the chart it's just like showing, of course, you have 100 shares, nobody cares, but you start having 5, 10, 20,000 shares of NTS. The only thing is you hide them, okay? But it's even better that you don't simply put it on the chart. Put it on, sorry, in the, on the level two. Okay, traders. Uh, so yeah, Chad, the video is on the website, education library, and it should be in uh, webinars or trade lessons. Okay. We made it like some, uh, some times ago. Let's see also here what's pushing APDN. Maybe it's coming up. CETA. Yeah. CETA. This was this morning. I had over here, Alexandra, she took a short, then she took another short over here, cover, cover now, waiting the last cover, 180. Um, and uh, FFIE is breaking out. FFIE is breaking out. Remember our levels, okay? Remember our levels, FFIE. Thank you, Carlitos. FFIE, GDC, they're pushing up. 
Okay, this will be a very interesting open. A lot of day two plays. So let's start watching for some good plays. Traders, again, when I come to trade with us in the room, look how here is rejecting this level on FFIE. Uh, grind 50, okay, all capital letter. Grind 50. Remember, this is our code. Okay, see you back on Monday. Thank you, traders. Good luck for your trading and reach out if you need. Thank you.